so we've got this comparison now between the Aurora Sport and the Aurora Pro. The biggest difference is in price, but uh, both are actually pretty good cameras. You decide if uh, the difference in quality is worth the price. Okay, so we've got the North Star. And there we are on the, uh, the right hand side, Polaris. And can hold a little dipper, a little bit of Ursa Minor. And go back down. Then we go to the left, constellation of Buertes, if it's pronounced correctly. And you've got Corona the Crown. Lovely clear night. Oh, it's getting a bit light now. If we've just gone past the uh, shortest night. Here we have the constellation of Cassiope the Queen. The big W. And uh, if we drop across this way, you should be able to pick up uh, Pegasus. There is a square. I think I've got it. Yes, I have. Now, the naked eye, I can only see two stars inside the square. But these cameras pick up plenty more. And this is a good test. This is Andromeda Galaxy. Yeah, I can't miss it. Both cameras pick it out. I do believe the Pro is a little bit better. Oh, lovely timing. <laughs> oh, another one. My goodness, have we got a shower going on? Directly overhead now we have uh, Lyra, the harp. That bright star, Vega. Made famous in the movie uh, Contact. 26 light years away. As we're constantly reminded during the movie. And we have a satellite. Not particularly a prominent one, but. Back is aching. <laughs> but the green grid does allow me to uh, keep a fairly steady shot on the stars, so the shot becomes usable. We don't want the uh, image going all over the place, like it in the Blair Witch Project. Five minutes of that, but enough. Right, one final constellation. It's almost directly overhead. Cygnus, this one. The North Cross. And even though it's getting light, I can still pick out the Milky Way. Passing through it. Yes, good test. <laughs>